All right, welcome to SketchUp lesson number three. Today we're going to make a birdhouse. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to apply all the basic 2D and 3D construction tools that we've used in the previous two lessons. And in addition to that, I'll show you how to create your own components, which will help with the organization of the parts of your model. And it also really helps SketchUp itself um, organize and differentiate between your different parts. And we'll, we're also going to use guidelines uh, to make other geometric shapes and use a different rectangle tool, the rotated rectangle tool. So I'll show you how all that works. So let's have a look at this birdhouse that we're going to make first. Here it is. Here's that birdhouse. Beautiful. So let's go ahead. Um, let's create a new file. If you don't remember how to get to this page, see my previous lesson. I'll walk you through how to get to that. But otherwise, we're going to start a uh, new simple template feet and inches. And then we'll let that open up. Here we go. Don't need our person over here. Cool. So let's go ahead and start with a rectangle. Just your standard rectangle. You can make that anywhere. Let's click here. And our dimensions are going to be 5.5 inches, comma, 9.5 inches. And enter. That's a, quite a bit smaller. There we go. And there's our rectangle. And now we're going to use the push-pull command to extrude this a total of one inch. There we go, one inch. So this will serve as our base. Let's, uh, let's select all of it. Now to select all, well, yes, you could hold down the control key and select more of the faces, but that, that takes time. What you can do is triple click on one of the faces and that will select the entire shape. So one, two, three, there you go. The whole thing is selected. Makes it a lot easier. So to make this into wood, turn it into wood, we'll click on this paint bucket, click on this browse tab, and we'll scroll down and we have to look for something that's related to wood. There we go, wood. So how about we pick hmm, which one looks good? Let's pick that wood. And now we can click on. It's not working. There we go. Being a little bit slow. Another way to go about this, I think my computer's lagging a little bit. Bear with me here. You can have that wood ready to go and you can hold control and then you can click on one of the faces. There it is. It's just again, it's being a little bit slow. So here we go. This is the completed base. That's all there is to it. Now to help you distinguish between the different parts, and to help SketchUp distinguish between the different parts. More so, it's important for SketchUp to be able to distinguish. We're going to select the whole thing, triple click, one, two, three, and we're going to turn this into its own component, its own specific object. So now that it's selected, let's right click and click on Make Component. Definition, we're gonna call this Base, and that's it. That's all we need to do, we can click OK now. and it will load. And now you can click on the base and the whole thing will be, uh, will be highlighted and selected. Now, if you needed multiple of a certain component, you don't have to make it over and over again. You can turn it into a component, go over to the components tab, and there it is. So I can insert this as many times as I may want or as many times as I may need but I don't need these, so I'm going to delete these. 
and I'll close that out. So let's go ahead and make the back and the front of the birdhouse. So another rectangle, rectangle tool. I'll orbit that better. I'll click on this back corner and I can snap over to here. So I want it to be this length across. So you see in the bottom right where it says dimensions, you see five and a half inches isn't changing. That's because I've snapped to this other, other edge. But the, the length, the other, the second dimension is changing. Now if we're happy with this five and a half inches, but we want to change the, the other dimension, we can click or type in comma, just comma, so that tells that the first dimension was fine. Comma, and we're gonna make this second dimension one inch. So comma one, and that gives us the rectangle that we want. And if we're not too sure about that, there is a tape measure tool right down here on the left. You can click on that tape measure tool, click between two points, Oh, there we go. And you can see one inch there. Click between another two points. Didn't work that time. Let's try it again. There we go, five and a half inches. Don't even have to click down. You can just hover, see the different dimensions. Cool. Now I think I just made a guideline that I do not want, so I'm going to delete that. There we go. So you can see that this rectangular face is highlighted now, meaning it is a region that we can extrude and we will extrude it using the push pull tool. Click on that region. We're going to extrude that a total of 12 inches or one foot, 12 inches. There we go. And now we'll see how to make this triangular shape in, in the back and the front. So what we'll do is we'll go, it's uh, along with the tape measure tool, we have the protractor tool here. Let's click on protractor, click the top midpoint here. Now we need a reference line, so let's click on this endpoint right here. And you can see now I'm making an angle. Look at the bottom right corner. You'll see the angles changing as I move, move my mouse. We're going to make a guideline that is at a 45 degree angle. So type in 45 and enter. There we go, there's a guideline for us. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing, but on the right side. Clicking in the, at the midpoint, clicking the end point to the right of that, and defining a 45 degree angle from there. There we go. So we're done with that tool. So what we'll do is we're gonna make a triangle here. Make a triangle here and then use the push pull tool to push that back and pretty much cut out these corners. But this is not an actual triangle yet. These are just guidelines. Let's use the line tool to connect the midpoint and this point there. And now this is an actual triangle. Let's do the same for the other side. There's your triangles. Let's use the push-pull tool and push these triangles back. There we go. Let's click on the eraser tool, delete these guidelines. There we go. Use the paint bucket tool. The last material that we used, the wood, is uh, the same as before. So we don't have to go searching for it again. I'm gonna hold down control, click on this whole object, and that's it for the back. So before we make the front, let's turn it into a component. Select tool, triple click on one of the faces, right click, make component, and we'll call this back. There we go, click OK. Now we've made the back. Now to make the front, we need this same shape. So we'll just use the line tool, 
click on each of the endpoints of this shape. And there you can see it's there we go, it's all highlighted now because it did make a region. If it doesn't come up for you, you the line tool probably didn't make a line somewhere as it was supposed to. So just check around for any missing lines. Now we can use press pull or push pull, excuse me. Extrude this a total of one inch. Now this front is supposed to be out farther. So let's use the move tool. Excuse me, I think we need to select the whole object first. So let's triple click, one, two, three, there we go. Then use the move tool, click on the object. And you can see, if you look closely, the, there's a green dotted line extruding out, meaning uh, we are moving along parallel to the green axis. You can move anywhere else if you want to. You can see now the dashed line is black, but you can snap along to any axis that you want. Now I'm on the blue axis, let's go back to the green axis. Let's extrude this out a total of six inches, just like that. Now we do have a little bit more work to do. Let's click on the paint tool. Wood is ready to go. Let's uh, hold control and click on this object. And before we're done, we have to put in a hole for the birds to go in and a, there's a hole for this perch right here. So let's make two circles. There's the circle tool. Next to the rectangle, click on rectangle and then there's the circle tool. So to make it right in the middle, we can hover over the midpoint and move upward. There we go. And it doesn't matter where you place this, it can be maybe right about there but we will make this have a one inch radius. Then we can make another circle. Make sure you're snapped to the midpoint and going upward from there. Place your circle, again, doesn't matter where, but this is going to have a one eighth radius. So one over eight and enter. Now the beauty of the, this push pull tool is that like you saw earlier, we can push through and make holes. I'm gonna to have to zoom in closer for this one. There we go. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm making it all the way through. Yep, there we go. Now, as you can see, I'm seeing this right now, I extruded a little bit too much with that top circle. So I'm going to select just these two faces and delete them. Ah, that didn't quite work. So let's see what happened here. What can we learn from this? Can I do this now? Nope, doesn't like that. What I'll do is I'm going to do, I'm going to undo a bit of what I did. So right before I extruded that, and then I'll explain what happened. Oh, going back too far. Here's getting slow again. Come on, there's my two circles. Okay, so what happened was I clicked the circle up like I was supposed to, but I kept extruding outward when I shouldn't have. I should have clicked right on the back face. There we go. No extra extrusion there. And then I'll do the same thing with this little circle. There we go. Much better. That's it for the front. So select tool, triple click. There we go. And right click, make component, title this front, and click OK. There it is. Now for the sides, this side here and this side over here. This is where the rectangle tool will come into play. There's the rectangle tool. I'll click on this upper corner point and move downward and click on this lower right corner point. And then there, there that makes a rectangle. Same thing on the other side. And actually, let's not do that. Let's just make one side and we'll see 
an alternate to what we can do from there. So there's a side face. Uh, we'll use push pull. Click on that face. We'll extrude that out a total of one inch. There we go. Now, similar to what we did before, oh, let's use the paint bucket tool. Hold control, click on that whole side. Select tool, triple click on the side. Right click, make component, and title it side. Now we could have done the same thing with the left side, but let's see what happens if we can insert the side component. There it is. So there's the side. Oh, and we got, that's perfect actually. And we can snap that to this bottom right corner right there. Great, so we have two side components. We didn't have to remake the same side. Uh, or the same shape on the other side. So now we just need to make the roof and the perch. So let's go ahead and make the roof first. Now we're going to need to make a rectangle over here. I don't need this tab anymore. I'm going to want to make a rectangle, but the problem is with just the rectangle tool, is it really doesn't want to want to make a rectangle along this face, which is really annoying. But there is a rotated rectangle tool right here that will allow us to make that slanted rectangle. So let's click on a one corner point. And keep in mind with the uh, regular rectangle tool, you're only defining two points. But with the rotated rectangle tool, you're defining three points. So we did one, here's two, clicking, and then moving down four, three. And there you go, there's your rectangular, slanted rectangular face. Now we can extrude that using push-pull one inch. Let's make an overhang, let's make uh, two overhangs. One here, let's pull that down half an inch, 0.5. And let's bring out this face all the way out to where the front face of the base is. So we click on the front face of the base, and now those two, those two faces are coplanar. And now you're used to this. At this point, we will use the paint bucket, hold control, click on that object. Then we'll click on the select tool, triple click on the object, right click, make component. Let's title it uh, roof right side. And we'll click OK. And then we're pretty much going through very similar steps as before, but the left side's going to be a little bit bigger. So rotated rectangle tool, click on one corner, click on another corner, that's the second point, and the third one will be one of these down here. Cool. Push pull, one inch. Orbit, pull this face downward, half an inch, 0.5, enter. And we don't need to pull this face out. That was already done. Now let's paint it, change it into wood, control, click. Select tool, we need to make this a component, so triple click, right click, make a component, and we'll name this roof left side. Great. And finally, the perch, and then it's all done. So let's make a circle. We're gonna zoom in, zoom in here. Here's the hole for the perch, and you see the inner circle, innermost circle is where we're going to extrude from. So let's make a circle using the circle tool. 
There we go, circle. And you can hover over the circle and then go into the center there. Now we're snapping to the center of that circle. And we will snap to the circumference of that back circle. Now from here, we can go ahead and click on push pull. I click on that circle, pull it out. Oh, it's a lot of zooming. There we go. And we're going to extrude that up until the, up until this front face. So I'll click on this front face. Cool. Then paint bucket tool. Control click on the cylinder. Turn it into a component. So we'll triple click one two three. Right click, make component, and we'll title this perch like that. And OK. Great. So that's it. That is the birdhouse. So just to review some of what we did, we did go through all pretty just about all the geometric shapes with the exception of polygon. Um, and we didn't use arc this time around, but we did use a lot of push pull. Um, with just making extrusions or even making holes or cuts. So this, this wasn't too bad, but we also did use the paint bucket tool to make uh, change the material. And we did a lot with component making. So if you wanted to use these again, now you can. You don't have to redraw them. But do keep in mind that without turning these into components, SketchUp is going to have a, a lot more difficulty with making or doing some of the things that you want it to do. For example, if you wanted to only, like we, uh, we clicked on the paint bucket tool and then we held down control, and I'll show you as an example. So I want this to be pink. I could hold down the control key and then click on this component. I think it's just being a little bit slow now. Uh, it doesn't want to change. See, now it doesn't want to show, want me to show you what I mean. But if these were not made into components, SketchUp would not know what figures you wanted the color to change. So these components really do help, and you should use them whenever you're making an object. But that's it. Let's go ahead and name this. Uh, save it to the SketchUp project, title it Birdhouse, because this is a birdhouse. And let's put our name in there as well. And we'll click Save here. So that's it. That's how you make components. That's how you make a birdhouse. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.